So today we are back in the warehouse here in Glan and the, I've been looking through all these shelves thinking which one we should do and I finally found it. A very, very special malt. Yeah! <sighs> Chateau Abbey. Being the oldest malting plant in Belgium means we make a lot of different kinds of malt, which is fantastic for making award-winning beers. However, sometimes brewers still have a hard time understanding how they are to be used. Don't worry, we've got you covered. In this series, we show you how to use each and every single one of all of our malts. Abbey malt is also known as Belgian brown malt, made through kilning pale malt at 110 degrees Celsius in a specific controlled manner. This malt exhibits interesting flavor characteristics, notably that of fresh bread, fruit and nuts. Alors le malt abbey est un malt qui a été produit sur Touraille. Alors on monte ici à 50 EBC. Alors le but n'est pas de développer des arômes café torréfié, on est plutôt sur des arômes euh, céréales un peu pain cuit. Euh, un peu croûte, euh, vraiment pour des arômes euh, qu'on veut euh, ne pas trop marquer dans la bière, comme des bières ambrées, euh, légères en arômes, pour laisser de la place pour les arômes de la levure ou du houblon. Belgian beers. Belgian triple. Abbey malt gives a really fruity malt complexity to this beer style. Adding around 10% should do the trick. Belgian quadruple. As this malt really changes in character the more it is allowed to mature, strong beers that have a longer maturation time are a very good idea. With a Belgian quadruple being a very good option for amounts as high as 20% of the grist. British beers. Brown ale. Belgian brown malt is much more similar to British amber malt in color, but it is the flavor that really defines the difference. Brown ales are known for that nutty character that this malt delivers with flair. Use anywhere between 5 and 15% of the mix. Porter. In these beers, when you need a mid-range malt character to add complexity to the caramel and roast flavor profiles, there's none better than adding up to 10% of this malt to really make your beer shine. German beers. German Helles Export Beer. As a way to create an additional element of flavor complexity, while still keeping within style parameters, the addition of small amounts of Abbey malt really helped to give the malt backbone a bit more personality. Small amounts though, as this malt is quite strong in flavor, let's say between 2 and 5% of the grist. Vienna Lager or Altbier. With both these styles, there's an emphasis on the Maillard rich malt notes in these beers to create a malt profile that sings a little bit louder, add 5 to 8% to your grist. American beers. Rye IPA. The flavors that are achieved through the use of rye malt would do well with a little Abbey malt mixed in there, as this malt has flavor characteristics of both the fruity hops as well as the nuttiness of the grain. Think of it as a booster of sorts. However, use only between 1 and 8%. California Common. As with our previous examples, the same can be said here. This malt has both characteristics of fruitiness as well as a bit of malt and toast, so very small amounts can elevate your recipe in ways you would be pleasantly surprised to find. No more than 5% of your malt bill. Mm -hmm. 